Adrian's Personal Journal, as told by Christina Chen. Hey, Possum Journal. I'm Adrian. But you probably already knew that, since I'm the one writing you. I'm also a cat noir, and that's kind of why I'm starting this. Ladybug and I were on patrol the other day, and I mentioned how hard it can be sometimes with no one but Plague to talk to. He's great, but almost always reverts the conversation back to cheese. And she suggested I start a journal, since it's something that helps her a lot, and a way to express myself more freely. So that's what I'm gonna do. No one else can ever see this, of course. But Plague and I found a really good hiding place for it. And, worst case scenario, we can always cataclysm it if anyone gets too close. But how awesome is this? I feel better already. It's so nice to be able to write whatever I want. And for once, I don't have to worry about someone checking my handwriting. Look, I can scribble and no one cares. I can purposely misspell words. Or should I say, misspell. I can write outside the lines. This is so much fun. Ladybug always has such great ideas. It's been a few weeks since Shadow Moss stole all the miraculous and became monarch. It's nice to see Ladybug starting to get her confidence back and acting more like herself. That night was really hard. On everyone especially her. I can't believe Felix would do such a thing. It's beyond foolish. It was selfish, cruel, and treacherously unthinkable. I can only hope Felix had some kind of wild good reason or was completely mind-wiped by Monarch, but even then he should have known better. Our only hope is that somehow he can help us find Monarch and put a stop to his villainy once and for all. Chances seem pretty slim right now, though, since Felix is nowhere to be found. Part of me worries that, after the deal, Monarch captured and did something to him in order to preserve his secret. But the other part of me, the one that grew up with my cousin, suspects it's more likely that he crawled into a hole somewhere to bide his time and leverage whatever he got out of the deal. It makes me sick. I wish there was more I could do. I've never seen Ladybug break down like that before. When she came to visit me as Adrian, she became nearly paralyzed with panic when we realized we'd been betrayed by Felix. I knew she blamed herself for giving him Miraculous, but it really wasn't her fault. How could she have known? I didn't think of it then, but looking back, I'm kind of flattered to trust me with it, especially after my failure as Aspic. If only it could have actually been me she gave it to. Part of me felt so helpless and scared as I watched her cave in on herself, crippled with panic and despair. But the other part of me came alive, and I felt a strength and determination I've never felt before, as my mind became laser-focused and I knew I had to help calm her down so we could figure out a solution. She did, of course. She's incredibly smart. But unfortunately, it was already too late. I could hear her crying through the bathroom door and my heart broke for her as well as the knowledge of what this might do to Paris. I longed to comfort her, but by the time I decided to open the door, she was already gone. That's when I realized she didn't need me as Adrian to comfort her. She needed her partner, and I knew just where to find her. It's been our special spot for a while now, and has a great view of the Eiffel Tower. I didn't notice it then, though. All I saw was her bundled up with her head against her knees and weeping as if she were the biggest failure in the world. I wished she could see herself as I did. She looked so small, so tiny in comparison to the city around her. And yet that same girl had faced and conquered dangers and impossible odds time and time again. She had made a mistake, and I knew we'd have to fight twice as hard because of it. But nothing could ever shake my faith in her. She's amazing. No one else could do the job as swiftly, creatively, and elegantly as she does. Ladybug is not perfect, and I realized I'd expected that of her for way too long. She's always seemed so invincible, so focused and effortlessly talented that I often forget she's just a kid like me, burdened with enormous pressure and trying out of her mind to save everyone. I watched her quietly for a few moments. The rain covering the sound of my footsteps as I moved to stand beside her, and she was crying too hard to notice me. 
Unsurprisingly, Monarch made his dramatic entrance to gloat and mock and give us the ultimatum to hand over our miraculouses. But instead of responding with the usual fire and tenacity, Ladybug agreed with him. Her heart so broken and shame so blinding, she felt as if she truly had lost everything. But she hadn't lost me. We still had each other, and I was determined to be the partner she needed, no matter the odds. My heart stung a bit as she listed all the ways she'd withdrawn from and ignored me, and I knew it was true. After all, I'd been miserably listing them myself not too long before, but none of that mattered now. She was the same lady she always was, a bit clumsy and timid and prone to overthinking, but kind and brave, with a hidden strength that would spring up and shine for all to see. I realized in all this time I thought she was dismissively ignoring me, She'd probably been trying to account for every disaster, and head over heels with worry, spiraling as she was prone to do and leapt to the conclusion that distance was the way to keep those she cared about safe. All this time I felt left out was because she'd been selflessly taking all the burden on herself, and crazily thinking she could handle it all. I know my partner, and I know she would never do anything to hurt me intentionally, but there she was, taking all the blame and rambling on about how I should give up on her. And I knew her mind would pull her under if I didn't put a stop to it. So, I did. I said the one thing that came to mind. The one comfort I could offer her. A word that showed connection and devotion. And perhaps a hint of admiration to remind her of who she truly was. Milady. I've used that term thousands of times for her. At first, it was more playful and possessive, as I wanted Ladybug and the whole world to know that she had captured my heart and I would follow her forever. As time went on, it became sort of a habit, and was more of a fond endearment or a friendly nickname. Of all my nicknames for her, it was the one she opposed the least, and I think she even missed it when I tried to let up for a while. I liked to use it for her, too. Not just because it gave me hope that one day she truly would be mine, but it suited her. She was, in every respect. A lady, and deserved to be treated as such. Before I met Ladybug, I never knew you could love someone so deeply, and afterwards I thought it was impossible to ever love her more than I did. But seeing her there, alone on the roof, small raindrops mingling with the tears on her face and her arms clenched tightly around her knees with worry, I knew as the name left my mouth that this was different. In that moment, a warmth and assurance flooded my soul, and I loved her more than ever. But it was no longer an all-consuming, heart-pounding, enamored sort of love. It was a committed love. A protected love. A love filled with compassion and sacrifice that I'd just scratched the surface of before. I would do anything for this girl. Including giving up my pursuit of her if that's what she wanted. Instead, I would be her knight. Protecting and looking out for her. Being there for her when I can. I was done chasing Ladybug's affections. Oh, don't get me wrong. My heart still flips when I see her, and old habits are hard to break. But that night in the rain changed everything. On the one hand, I wish it never happened. But on the other, I'm glad it did. The whole city was gathered anxiously around us, with Monarch's face looming in the sky. But when I reached out my hand and pulled Ladybug into a hug, I felt like we were finally protected from the storm. I was still worried and angry. Not at her, but at those responsible for all the suffering and taking what wasn't theirs. I assured her that we would get them back, one by one, and never let this happen again. But that's when she asked something that surprised me. You and me. I softened my grip on her and couldn't hold back a smile. Of course it would be me and her, just like in the beginning. We needed each other, thrived together. The duo that always worked. Us against the world. With my excellent suit-enhanced hearing, I couldn't miss the quiver in her voice, and I hugged her all the more gently to remind her of how precious and treasured she was, regardless of her mistakes. She truly is the best superhero that ever was, and soon all of Paris joined in agreement with me. The next few days were especially hard. And although we recovered the time miraculous, Alex was required to go into hiding outside of our time until Monarch is defeated. An added pressure Ladybug and I both feel. 
We were both a little paranoid as to what Monarch might try next. Strangely, there haven't been any acclimatizations in weeks, and while I'm sure he's up to something, I'm trying to enjoy the peace as it lasts. Ladybug and I have been able to spend a lot more time together, so that's been nice. At first, our patrols were super rigid as we tried to be ready for anything. But now it's more like a team building session or just hanging out with a friend, where we play cards and eat snacks to pass the time. My favorites are the ones Ladybug brings from the Dupe and Chang Bakery. Those are by far the best. I've still been trying to take things more seriously and make sure I support Ladybug as much as I can. Flag sometimes jokes that I've become more like Catwalker, the character we shamefully tailored to make Ladybug fall for. But in truth, I feel like I've become more like myself. Instead of trying to impress Ladybug with grand heroics or reckless bravery, I can give valuable insights and bravely fight villains without doubting whether she thinks I'm up to the task. I know she cares about me, just as I care about her, and it's so freeing that I can just be me without feeling like I have to put on an act all the time. I make an effort to not be as flirty and careless during battles or patrols, though I do still make jokes and try to lighten the mood, as jokes and puns do come quite naturally to me. And not to brag, but I do think they give us both a chance to relax and even help Ladybug solve some of her lucky charms sometimes. So yeah, jokes are definitely an integral and essential part of my personality. Oh yeah, I just remembered. Freedom! Okay, back to it. Sometimes Plague picks on me for it. Not sure why I brought this up, but okay. Being too well-mannered and should behave more like other teen boys as opposed to complying with my father's strict expectations. But while I don't agree with my father on most things, I am glad he taught me self-control and raised me to have good manners. Besides, it's more about mom anyway. She used to call me her little gentleman and she loved when I'd open doors for her or help her carry things. So, by being respectful or polite makes me feel closer to her, and I know she'd be proud of me. Also, we watched a lot of old-fashioned romances together. My mom would always point out how the best leads carried themselves with dignity and confidence and knew how to treat a lady. Where was I going with this? Oh yeah, how manners are not a catwalker thing, but a me thing. Or really, any respectable person thing. And hey, if Ladybug likes it. Ah, what am I saying? I guess that's one thing I've been thinking about a lot this year. Who am I? And what kind of person do I want to be? I don't have a full answer yet, but I'm working on it. And hey, maybe this journal will help me figure it out. Speaking of figuring things out, I have some homework to get to. And it's already 11 p.m.? Wow, I really better get going. Thanks for listening to all this, and see you next time. Yours truly. Adrian Catmore.